I got up early this morning to do an important job, putting a set of Waverleys on this beautiful Martin M30 that belongs to Yorma Kalkinen. It's his own model. Not many guys get their own Martin model. Old timers like me know Yorma from the Jefferson Airplane. He was famous in the 60s with that band. And then he and Jack Cassidy kept together as a team in their hot tuna, and they're still playing today. Yorma Kalkinen and I became friends 30 years ago when he moved to the area along with his wife Vanessa and they opened the Fur Peace Ranch. Musicians from all over the world come and teach there and it's a great place to go. I'm gonna wait till Yorma gets here and have him string his own guitar because I'm curious how he puts the wines on. Everyone does it different and he doesn't go out of tune when he plays. Hey Dan. Hey man. I know you're helping me out with the tuners on the guitar so I brought your present an advanced copy of my autobiography, everything you didn't really need to know about me is right there. And I made my it, man. described it oh, to look you. Look at you. That's me. I can't believe my friends let me go out dressed like that. God, I didn't know you were doing this. Well, there you go. Wow, this is gonna be killer. <laughs> I don't know about can do almost anything. At least not play the guitar like you. I was gonna string it up, but I'm thinking, would you string it up yourself Absolutely. and we'll shoot a little video? I wanna sure. see how you wind them up. Okay. Uh, strings are a funny thing. Everybody's got their preference. And lots of people are making good strings. I've been doing stuff with Martin for a long time and, uh, and I've gotten to like a lot of their strings. I've been using these Lifetime SPs and my gauges are 12 through 54. I guess they call it light gauge now. Yeah. So anyway, I never, I never tuck my strings under ever. I just never did. I put enough windings on it so it's just not going to slip. I just try to keep the winding so it's going to wind nice and smooth. I probably didn't need that much for a big fat string like this, but I like to change my strings every night because I like the strings to be bright. It's probably not necessary, especially with these new, whatever, whatever they do to these lifetime strings. I'm not fond of coated strings because they're just not as bright as I like from a string. Oh, look at this. Look at this. I see there's one, uh -huh. ah, there's one gold tuner That's there. That's my surprise. Ah, that is quite a surprise. It's the Yorma Kalkman version now. <laughs> you can sell them. Yeah, Yorma set. The other thing that was funny is when I started taking lessons in D.C., Sophocles Pappas, who was a contemporary of Segovia, I remember him. was repulsed by the music I, wa I wanted to play, you know, Leuven Brothers and old-timey stuff, and he wanted me to play whatever. So. So he started me out playing this old man, he plays one, he plays Nick Nick and all that kind of stuff. And I realized I, I needed to know some stuff, but what he didn't tell me was the guitars needed to be tuned all the time. Because I came from the piano, you know, when you want to tune the piano, you call somebody, he comes and he tunes it. So my guitar would sound crummier and crummier as the week would go by, and then finally he, he suggested that I, that I actually tune my guitar periodically. <laughs> All right, let's let's plug that tuner in and uh, see what we got. Well, heck, let's. Uh... I'm wondering if this. Look at that! Do you see that? All right, sec. You got a good ear, man. I got lucky. You don't need no stinking tuner. <laughs> I got lucky. All those years in front of imps, and he can still hear. My wife and daughter might disagree with you there. What I was hoping to do here today is get Yorma to give us a little quick lesson, a finger-picking lesson. Absolutely. What I was thinking about was talking a little bit about the intro I have for the Jimmy Rogers tune, Waiting for a Train. And I always love the song, Waiting for a Train. I know everybody's done it, but it's a great song. So the version that I had has a trumpet player playing the little intro that I'll show you what I adapted. And I researched it, and that trumpet player was Louis Armstrong. So here's Jimmy Rogers up in New York, I think that's where we recorded, and, and uh, the producer goes, hey Louie, what are you doing this morning? Nothing? Listen, we're cutting a couple tracks down, it's really simple, do you want to play an intro? And that's all. That's the only thing, he just plays on the intro. So what I did is I tried to capture the essence of his intro. Killer. <laughs> Jimmy kicks the song off with a yodel, but I do it on the guitar. I have vowed, out of deference to the sensibilities that people might hear me play or sing, that I will never ever yodel in public. So the song is uh, Waiting for a Train, it's in the key of G. So, so Jimmy goes, and I've translated. So, 
Ole, ole, ole. So what we're doing here is we have a little double stop thing on strings one and three at the seventh fret. And you can see that's part of a G chord, uh, whichever form you want to make, G. Flat it a whole step. And then go down. Now if you're doing a double stop thing at a diatonic scale, there will always only be two fingerings. In this case, on whatever pair of strings you're doing and whatever note you start with. In this case, we have the root, the G on the top. So, adjacent frets, same frets, same frets, adjacent frets. And now, wow, no cutaway, look at that. How about that, huh? Anyway, so, yodel. Exactly. And then Louis comes in. What I'm going to do here is a little double stop lick that is going to wind up in a partial of this C chord here. So I'm starting here, strings two and four at the third fret. G note, and then. What I'm doing here is I'm doing partials of the G, G flat, F, E. But we don't need all those notes, it's cluttering. So I'm gonna do first string, third fret, third string, fourth fret, sixth string, third fret, and just grab those three strings. Then A major. Quick sidebar in this A chord. A lot of ways to finger stuff. If it works for you, that's great. I do it this way because I, that's how I learned when I was learning to play. Third finger, second fret, second string. Second finger, second fret, strings three and four. Now, this frees these two fingers and my thumb to do other stuff and other finger picking applications. And it gives me opportunity to go from this A, that A seventh, just by standing that second finger up. D major, and I like to get the third interval, the F sharp in the bottom. So, in real time. Well, all around, water tank, waiting for a train. Thousand miles away from home, sleeping in the rain. Went up to a brakeman and give him a line of talk. Said if you got money, said now you won't have to walk. Well, I didn't have a nickel. Not a penny could I show Get off, get off, you railroad bum He slammed the boxcar door Killer. Thanks, Norma. My pleasure. Good time.